Hello everyone. Thank you for joining Parkinson Voice Project for today's online Speak Out Home practice session. My name is Samantha Allendary. I'm a speech language pathologist and the founder of Parkinson Voice Project. I'm here to help you establish and maintain a consistent Speak Out Home practice routine. It is so important to do your Speak Out exercises every single day, so we try to make it interesting for you. Today is Friday. Everybody say T-G-I-F with intent. Ready? T-G-I-F. Make sure to get that last letter. Ready? T-G-I-F. On Fridays, we do things a little bit differently. We're going to do a speak out warm up. Now, when I say that, I'm not necessarily talking about the may, me, my, mamu. Yes, we'll do those. But what I'm talking about is a warm up that you will do before you get together with friends, before you make an important phone call, before you go out to dinner. It is so important that you warm up your voice. So let's take a sip of water, and I'm gonna we're gonna go through a warm up. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of different questions where you can practice speaking with intent in conversation. But first, water, okay? A warm up, like when you're in the car getting ready to go somewhere, um, consists of three of our Mamie My Mamoos three ahs, three glides, count to 10, forwards and backwards, and then recite something that you know very well. So let's start with three may, me, my, mo, moose first. Speak out. May, me, my, mo, moose. Go on, be very deliberate. May, me, One more time. May me my mo mo. Okay, so this is the warm up. That was three may me my mo moos. Now we're going to do three ahs. Ready? Ah. them so let's do our best ready again uh, very nice don't let it trail off one more uh, Let's take a sip of water. Grab your cup of water with intent. Think about it. Swallow with intent. As people go through the Speak Out Therapy program, hopefully they're not only learning how to speak and swallow with intent, but they are learning how to live with intent. It's so important. It's so important. All right. The next part of a vocal Speak Out warm-up is to do three of the glides. Remember that the glide, I want you to have a steady ah uh, first. That makes you use more intent. Steady ah, uh, and then glide up. Here we go. Ah. Uh, stop all the way. very deliberate we're very purposeful we're projecting our voice forward we're really thinking about it let's do another one uh... stop all the way close your mouth Very 
Very good. One more, one more. Uh, uh, very good. Let's get a sip of water with intent. I emphasize the speak out warm up, the vocal warm up. It is so important. Think of somebody who plays an instrument. They're going to do their practicing in the morning, okay, with their violin, let's say. And then before the performance, they're going to warm up their voice. With Parkinson's, speech and swallowing issues are very serious. They really are. 90% of people with Parkinson's struggle with speech and swallowing. If they don't receive treatment, if patients do not receive speech treatment, then they, they literally could lose their ability to speak. Their voice could become so soft that it can't be heard, and the swallowing can, be, uh, can lead to some serious problems. So we've got to, all right, be serious about this. Exercises in the morning, a warm-up before you go out, okay? It'll make it so much easier. It will always be easier for you to speak with intent when you've warmed up your voice. The next part of a speak out warm up is to count to 10 forwards and backwards. We're not going to stop, okay? We're just gonna say the numbers, but take a breath whenever you need it. Lift every number, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Backward. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Backwards slower. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a sip of water. The last part of a speak out warm up is to recite something that you know very well, okay? We do not want it to be a cognitive exercise. So I don't want you to have to think about it too much. So you could recite the Pledge of Allegiance, um, a prayer, a poem that you know very well, um, an old college fight song that you know very well, a nursery rhyme. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it requires you to keep talking for a minute or so, okay? Running speech, not just one word or, and not counting, okay? So we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. If you are joining us from another country, you can put me on mute right now and do the pledge from your country. Or you can put me on mute and do a prayer or something like that. Ready? With intent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When I do this, I'm saying every word, I'm speaking out, I'm being deliberate. Let's do it one more time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So as we're doing that, we're coordinating the breathing, we're, okay? Our voice is all warmed up. Now, I looked at the clock before I started the warm-up. 
To do that warm up, it took eight minutes, okay? So that's what you need before you go out. Eight minutes, warm up your voice. Take a sip of water. We're going to go ahead and do Dr. Boone's words right now because then I want to spend the rest of our session just practicing speaking with intent. I'll show you in a moment. Let's do Dr. Boone's words first. Exaggerate the G's, the K's, and the NG's. We'll say each one twice. Ready? Gula ga ga ga. Gula ga ga ga. Next. Ku ka mangu ka. Ku ka mangu ka. Ready? Gangla. Gangla. And the last one. Ku kla. Ku kla. Very good. All right, the rest of today's session, I have this book and it's got a whole bunch of questions in it. They're not complicated, they're simple, but what we're focusing on is speaking out. I just want you to work on getting your voice in front of you, okay? So answer every question with intent. You can either answer with just a word, okay? One or two words, or if that's too easy, answer in a complete sentence. So the first one, what do you use to dry the dishes? So you would either say dish towel and make sure you're speaking out. Everybody say that. Dish towel, again, dish towel, or if that's too simple, then go ahead and say a complete sentence. I dry the dishes with a dish towel. Say that together. I dry the dishes with a dish towel. And always reaching for that last word whenever you're talking. Okay? All right, next one. What do you use to store clothing? Where do you put your clothes? So you would say, in a closet, everybody say that, in a closet, speak out, or I store my clothes in the closet. Ready? I store my clothes in the closet. Really focusing on that last word. All right, so now you know what we're doing. I'm just going to ask the questions now. What do you use to dig a hole? What do you use to wash your clothing? What do you use to season your food? What do you use to fix your hair? What do you use to cook your dinner? What do you use to sit on? Doing exercises like this will help you to generalize what you're learning in the, your exercises. It will help you to general, generalize speaking with intent from your exercises to real life conversation. But it is impossible to go from the exercises to, you know, um, telling a joke and a story and, and just talking in, in general conversation. You have to practice shorter responses, really focusing on speaking out. Okay, let's do some more. What do you use to sit on? What do you use to take pictures? What do you use to tell the time?
What do you use to cut paper? Now everybody, I want you to answer in a complete sentence. So now we're going to do a complete sentence. Um, what do you use to take your temperature? Let's say the answer together. I use a thermometer to take my temperature. Together, I use a thermometer to take my temperature. Are you saying every syllable with intent? We can't talk in general conversation without being able to do something like this first. All right, next. What do you use to sew on buttons? What do you use to wipe up a spill? What do you use to light a fire? What do you use to cut the grass? What do you use to measure your height? Okay. Now I'm going to ask you um, about occupations. Name the person or the occupation that does the type of work, okay? Who carries the mail? I want you to answer in a complete sentence. The mailman carries the mail and reach on that last word. Say it together. The mailman carries the mail. Again, the mailman carries the mail. All right, next one. Who builds houses? Who teaches school? Who takes care of sick animals? Now let me ask you a different question. Do you have a pet or have you ever had a pet? Tell me about the pet. And if you haven't had one, think of some, someone you know who has a pet. Tell me about the pet. Where could you take a pet, okay, if, if your pet is sick, can you think of um, where you would take them near your home? What if you can't think of a, a veterinarian or a vet hospital nearby? How could you find one? Let's say you are pet sitting and now you need to find a veterinarian or a vet hospital, how would you go about doing that? And tell me in complete sentences and say every single word with intent. Is this simple for you or not so simple? You always want to work at the level where you are. So you don't want to be describing pictures, telling jokes, telling short stories if answering questions that require shorter responses is challenging for you. Start at that level, okay? All right, one more question. Where can you buy pet food near your home? Give me directions from where you live to a place where you could buy pet food. Be very specific in your instructions. Where can you buy? Give directions from your home to the store where you can buy pet food.
I know that regaining and retaining the ability to speak and swallow is a challenge. This is why Parkinson Voice Project puts such a big emphasis on maintenance and hopefully these sessions are giving you some different ways to practice your speech. I want to remind all of you that it is June. Parkinson Voice Project raises money in June and the end of the year. And so we have a $250,000 June challenge. If we raise $250,000 this month, Someone who's been in our program for several years is going to contribute an additional $100,000. So we need your help. Just as a reminder, we don't charge for any of our therapy services at Parkinson Voice Project. We haven't since 2008. We have used the Pay It Forward system. So our philosophy is that we're going to work like crazy to help you with your speech and swallowing. And then twice a year, we're going to ask you to pay it forward and make a donation. So I ask you to please go to our donate page, make a donation, help us reach that $250,000 challenge. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back on Monday. Bye-bye.